Hey, Thomas DeLauer here with Garage Built Life, and we've got a different style workout for you today. This is one that you could range from a beginner all the way up to the most advanced professional athlete and still get a good benefit out of this. And the reason is, we're gonna be activating different muscle fiber types, but more importantly, we're going to be activating different kind of strength loads within those muscles. So what I'm talking about doing is a combination of resistance band workout, supersetted with a plyometric move for each respective movement. Without further ado, make sure you get a little warm up in, and let's Let's rock and roll. Okay, so this is gonna be somewhat high intensity interval, but not literally high intensity interval training. The reason I say that is because true high intensity interval training is where you're going to be going like 20 seconds, maximum intensity, and then as much recovery as you need in order to effectively do your next set. So in the literal sense of the word, this is not high intensity interval training, but we're gonna do it in a high intensity fashion. Okay, so you just need one bungee, all right? In this case, I'm doing a medium size, or medium strength. Okay, first what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go into a simple uh, kind of a lunge position, right? Now, the way that I hold the bungee is in what is called a goblet. Okay, I wanna hold it where I lace it around my thumbs and I'm holding it up. Why? Because I don't wanna just do this. I wanna hit this motion because I want to use my thoracic spine to help kind of retract my shoulders. So anyhow, let's go. Okay, so here, when I step back, most of my weight is staying on that front foot, pressing through the middle, okay? Notice how I'm not doing this. I'm actually stepping up because I want my lunge to be 80% of the force going down through that front leg, okay? So I'm gonna do 15. ditch the band, and then we're going right into our plyo move, which is gonna be the same leg, stepping up, and we do a little hop. That hop is important because we're trying to get the elastic components of the muscle, is what it's called. This should be difficult. You should feel like you don't have much hop. Simply put, I did the eccentric movement with the bungee, and then I go into a heavy concentric plyometric there. Go to the other leg. These shoes are really cool, by the way. They're called Zero, X-E-R-O. They're barefoot shoes, super minimalist. They gave me this pair, but they're pretty awesome. Same concept. Keep those shoulders back. Don't round forward. into that plyo move. Remember, as much rest as you need in between the legs, but not in between the moves. Round one for the lower body, already done. Now we're moving into some upper body. Same concept, still using the band, going up over the shoulders. Okay, we're gonna do eccentric push-ups. Nothing crazy, right? If you need to do them from the knees, do them from the knees. Okay, we're gonna go 20 in this case. And I want to focus on that negative down. Boom. Kind of explode it up. Two. Three. Pop up. As quickly as we can, we're going to go into a plyo jump up. So we're not jumping all the way up. We're starting in a push up. And we're hitting this. Push up. Step up. Kick it back. Plyo. It's like a partial burpee. Fly him, just like that. We do 12. A little fly movement, rest for a minute. Okay, next one, biceps. A little bit interesting in how we do biceps when it comes to the plyometric. Okay, obviously the curl is nothing fancy. But I do want you to do some form of a 21. 21 is where we go. Seven full range. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I do seven bottom range, okay? It's a little harder to bungee, but one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. Okay, actually over counter one. Okay, on that eighth one is where you stop halfway and do the top range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I burned it out all the way. Again, the idea of 21s is you're going seven, 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 but felt like I needed a little more resistance, so I went to 10. Okay, two variations for your plyo is if you have this equipment at your disposal, a step and a place to do pull-ups, you do something like this. Underhand grip, one leg on the bench, okay? You come down, you explode up and down the negative. Explode up, down the negative. Even if you can do a full pull-up, I would want you to use the bench as an extra help because we're not trying to just have that standard concentric movement. We're trying to have that blast, okay? That plyometric blast is gonna give you that explosivity. Now, if you don't have this equipment at your disposal, you can do some form of a squat to curl that goes like this. The reason I say a squat to curl is because at the bottom of your squat, you're gonna reduce all the tension on your arms. But then you come up and you explode up, down, explode. It makes a big difference having that leg drive with it. In some ways it makes the move easier, but allows you to get that contractile force at the top. Difficult, much easier. Okay, all depends on which route you wanna go. Okay, now we wanna do some ab crunches. We're gonna get these into the mix. And the hip move that we'll superset them with is gonna be a real burner. I have the luxury of having this where I can kind of band this up. You do not have to use that. You could use your bench. Uh, that bench is really lightweight, so it wouldn't be the best for that. Okay. You a simple band crunch. Hold nice and high. You want to be under tension all the time. So I recommend wrapping with both hands. And you're just coming in, and I want you to meet your knees to your elbows. It's hard to do band crunches because the resistance wants to kind of spring you back. So again, if you're at the gym, you could use a cable machine. Same kind of concept. The trick is, and let me just give you a little pro tip here, is when you're on the ground, you don't want to be having your back arched. You want to do what you can to drop the pelvis, keep the back flat, even when your legs are extended. Okay, it's easy to want to do that. You want to keep that pelvis down, and that way you're coming in and the tension is on your abs. Now, the hip movement that we're doing with this is going to be a plyo move for the obliques while the abs are still engaged. The advanced variation of this is at the bottom of your movement, I want you to do your oblique crunch, not at the top, so it looks like this. Okay, come down, push up position, right leg comes up, touches the knee, and then come up. Come down, left leg comes up, touches the knee, or touches the elbow, and down, okay. Now the trick is, we want to move kind of quick because we're trying to get that plyo effect, okay? So down and up. Okay, now that's not the easiest move, right? So what can you do for a different form of plyo that isn't going to involve the push-up? Same kind of thing without the actual push-up. So you can come from the elbows in a plank position and just come up like that. A little rock is okay, because we're trying to get, get that full dynamic plyo move. So a little rock back, a little lunge forward, a little rock back, lunge forward. Very simple move. Now, we gotta do some triceps. So, we have a couple options here. Beginner, you can just do your regular tricep move off the bench to the ground, or chair, right? Regular tricep move. Now, the hard part is, it's hard to add bungee resistance to that. If you have another chair or another bench, you can do it with your feet elevated. So it definitely makes it tougher, but it does make it a little bit easier if you wanted to add some band resistance. Not an ad, by the way, but this bench is the best $100 investment I made. It is so light, it's so easy to move. So, band resisted dips. Hard to do if you don't have another bench. One, two, 
we're gonna do 23. Now we're moving in to our plyo move, which you could do with a band or you could do without. We're gonna do a variation of diamond push-ups. I love diamond push-ups, but it's a lot of stress in the body to do a plyo with a diamond move, at least uh, on the downward, right? So what I would recommend you do is you do a wide to start, come down, and then walk in, explode up. So walk out, come down, and then at the bottom, come in, explode up, okay? So down, walk in, explode up. Cool thing is, you can do it from the knees, no problem, okay? That is a killer. You will definitely feel that. Triceps are fried after that 30 seconds, right? Last move before we rotate again. And this one is something that I've learned, well, I guess for years of, uh, from years of training incorrectly. I am guilty of having a weak thoracic spine. And when I say that, what do we all spend our time doing? Typing, looking at our phones, okay? I like to think I'm a fairly manly man. I don't know, just joking. But even I still don't hold my head up the way that I should. So this movement, this band pull apart, is a very integral part of me trying to maintain good posture. And it's just a last little finishing move. Hold about shoulder width apart, separate. It's not a big burner. It's very isolated. Pulling apart, we're getting that rear delt. See, back of the shoulder there. That is one time through. Now, the rule here is before you go through one more time, I want you to go through two more times, but before you go through your next time, pick a cardio medley of your choice and you're going to do a conventional interval, okay? 20 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So in this case, I might switch it up. Okay, I can do some burpees, do a little jump rope, okay? So jump rope is hard to do high intensity interval, but just to give you an idea of what we're doing here. So 20 seconds, so in this case, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do like 50 reps. Give it a 30 second rest, I'm gonna do 20 seconds again. Now, again, in the ideal world, this would be 20 second all out sprint, 30 second recovery. I have an echo bike, maybe I do that. Maybe let's do this for 20 seconds. Do a medley, mix them up, okay? It's probably dark and creepy over here, but it's all good. <laughs> 30 seconds, or as long as it takes me to recover. That always kicks my butt. I want to do four total intervals. So I did jump rope, I did echo bike, so we'll do burpees on this next round. Remember, pick the cardio that you want to do, whatever works well for you. It might be easy, it might be hard, but I wanna make sure that you're getting that full spectrum that we need for a good workout, full whole body activation. Now, one more cardio interval before I repeat, repeat, the return, uh, repeat the routine again. So just recover my 30 seconds. See what I wanna do in this next medley. How about we do, let's do some high knees. Do 30 total, 30 each leg, okay? Take my 30 seconds and then guess what we're back to? Back to our bungees. And we go through for round two. Back into this movement. Boom, right into it. Let the comments begin. Thomas, wait until you're breathing before you talk. We don't want to hear you breathe. Thomas, that's gross. Thomas, you're disgusting. I hear it all, right? I'm breathing, this is real. So anyway, go through as many times as you feel you need. I've gone through as many times as five when I'm trying to get a good workout. I've gone through as little as one when I'm just trying to get blood moving. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on Garage Built Life, and I'll see you another day.